Hey everyone, this is Monty Plaisance here again to give you another lesson in learning the tarot. Today, we're going to talk about tarot spreads. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for watching. I want to discuss a few things today and I'm going to introduce you to a new tarot spread that I find very useful for a variety of questions. Now, I know that a lot of you are wanting to go through the card meanings and I promise you that we'll get to that soon, but I want to give you an idea of the diversity of what you can actually do with the tarot before we get into the individual meanings of each card. And the reason for that is that I've taught tarot to a lot of people before and I find that when you start teaching the meanings first, people get a bit overwhelmed. Uh, you know, there's 78 different cards, there's 78 different meanings, sometimes they want to do reverse meaning, sometimes they, you know, th then you have the, the meanings as they alter based on what cards are next to it, uh, what cards are close to it. So people tend to get a little overwhelmed and they forget about the actual reading, that the cards are supposed to tell a story about the Querent's life or about your life. So they, f they get lost, they can't see the forest for the trees. Um, when they start focusing in on just the meanings, that, that becomes the most important thing to them and they, they get caught in the individual meanings rather than blending those meanings together into a useful reading. Alright, so we're going to get to that. So I promise on the next video I'm going to show you a method I've used for decades to help teach students the tarot that allows you to start reading straight away without getting too mixed up with all of the meanings. Uh, but for today, I'd like to take the opportunity to show you a new spread. Now we've already covered uh, a five card spread, we've covered the Celtic Cross spread. Today we're going to cover what's called the Sacred Seven, and I think you'll find it very useful. So what exactly are tarot spreads? A spread is a method of laying out the cards in which certain positions have a very specific meaning. Uh, in our last video I showed you the popular Celtic Cross spread which showed positions for past, present, future, and a few others. Uh, the Celtic cross spread is very useful for gaining insight on the Quarant and on the energy surrounding their life at the time of the reading, but there are many, many other spreads which can be used. Uh, the choice of a spread, of course, is entirely up to the reader. However, certain subject matter usually lends itself more readily to very specific spreads. As a reader, when you're listening to the background story of the Quarant, when the person comes to you and they're telling you the background of why they want the reading, uh, you, in your mind, should listen carefully and start to determine what type of spread would be most useful. Now, the questions posed to a reader generally fall within three broad categories. Um, there's First, there's personal questions like, uh, does so-and-so love me? Uh, what steps should I take to improve my business? Uh, what can I do to help make my child's future a success? Um, those types of questions are personal. Uh, of course, and then you have the public interest questions. You get the people that will come to you or if you're interested in something to do with the public, something uh, along the lines of will so-and-so be elected or re-elected? Uh, will the tax cut bill go through? Uh, will the criminals uh, be caught? You know, those types of things are public interest questions. Of course, and finally you have the spiritual questions like what can I do to improve my character? Uh, what is my cosmic mission? Am, am I mentally prepared for astral projection? Um, things like that. So you get those three different ones. You get personal, you get um, uh, public, and then you get uh, spiritual questions. Those are the three. In the personal questions, you usually get the big three, love, luck, money, and then a lot of times health. Believe it or not, most people don't want to know about their health. They want to know about their love, their luck, and their money. So those are the things that you'll be presented with probably more than anything else. Uh, technically, any spread can be used to answer any of these questions, but the Celtic cross spread, which we've shown, would lend itself more readily to personal questions and to some small extent the spiritual questions, but less for the public interest questions. And um, for the public interest questions, the, the, the five card spread that we showed in episode two would probably be your best, uh, your best bet for any kind of a public interest question. Uh, tends to be a little bit more useful. Now the spread that I, I'm going to show you today, which I've said before, is called the Sacred Seven Spread and it can be used for any of the above types of questions with clarity and with ease. Everything in life moves in cycles. Seconds, minutes, hours, days all add up to become part of a cycle. Some cycles, such as the beating of the heart, move fast, while a millennium on our calendars moves very slowly. To understand the diversity of the Sacred Seven spread, I want to draw your attention to a very important cycle 
which is the cycle of seven. The number seven is much more prevalent in nature than most of us realize. There are seven oceans, seven continents, seven vertebrae in the neck, seven layers of skin, two outer and five inner. Ocean waves roll in series of sevens. Rainbow has seven colors. Sound has seven notes. There are seven directions, seven days in a week. There are seven holes in your head. Go ahead and count them. Now seven, seven is the number of completeness and perfection, both physical and spiritual. Now I don't have time in this video to discuss the complexities of the cycles, but for those of you who are subscribed to my Patreon, uh, I will be uploading a video for my Adepti pledges, which will explain how the number seven is woven into the very fabric of reality and how the tarot has mimicked that cycle pattern to make it an invaluable and accurate tool to both maneuvering through life's patterns and predicting them. So you can subscribe to my Patreon by clicking on the link provided in the description below to get lots of extra content, personal interaction with both, my, with both myself and the new students I'll be taking in for the neophytes. Also, you'll get some behind the scenes content and a lot of other extras. So uh, if you haven't subscribed to my Patreon, go ahead and do that now. Do yourself a favor. There's gonna be a lot of really good information in there. So the sacred seven spread is laid out just as you see here. The numbers show the position of the cards as they're laid out. So one, two, and three form a triangle with a one point up. Four, five, and six form a triangle with the one point down. And then the center of the six points is the seventh mark. So in the sacred seven spread, we read by triads, the first triangle and then the second triangle. So points one, two, and three represent one part of the client's life and four, five, and six represent another part, all of them interacting together to create an energy current at the center, which is the outcome. So position one shows the past of the matter which caused the present condition. So for this particular question, we find out from this first card, what has happened to the client that has led them to this condition? What was the cause of their current situation? The second card is the current situation, the present that was caused by the past. And then the third is the immediate future, which is brought about by the combination of cards one and two. Card four are the forces that are favorable to the querent. Card five is the surrounding environment and its effect on the querent. Card six represents the forces that are opposing the querent. And then of course seven is the outcome. So we have the past, the present, the future. We have forces opposing forces assisting, and the general environment. All of these things are surrounding card number seven, which is the outcome. All of these things affect the outcome. So everything is swirling around this center. Okay, so for this spread, this is our background. I had a client that came to me uh, who was moderately successful in television production company out in California. And they primarily produced reality television, but he was hoping to break into something a little different because he felt like his creative talents were being wasted on that type of show. To attract attention to his work, he created a sizzle reel for a new show idea, which all of his friends praised as extremely good. Uh, it attracted so much attention that he was absolutely positive that it would get picked up by a big network and that, that he would finally be out of the, uh, out of the, the reality television um, genre. But after pitching the reel to a couple of dozen studios, no one wanted it. Uh, so this prompted his coming to me with the question, will I ever be successful as a television producer? So the client's birth information is December 12, 1978, which using my preferred method of choosing a significator makes this client a four of swords. Now for this spread, we don't separate the significator out of the deck. Instead, we note which card it is and see if it shows up in the reading itself. In this one, it doesn't, but in some cases, it will show up in the reading, and then that lets you know that's where the client is placed in the reading. When I laid out the cards, this is what they look like. All right, so let's start the reading. First thing that I want to look for is majorities. There are three major arcana out of seven cards, which shows forces outside of the client's life having an effect. But the rest of the cards are fairly diverse, so it shows a balanced reading from the start. This is our first indication that the client's lack of success may be due to his own doing. But let's break it down and see if that's the case. Alright, so our first triad 
we have three cards. We have the Nine of Cups, the Chariot, and the Emperor. In position one, which is the past as it affects the present, we have the Nine of Cups. This card represents complete success, pleasure, and happiness, wishes fulfilled. This shows us that the client has enjoyed a lot of success in the past in their chosen career. So they're not coming to us out of destitution or hardship, which has already been expressed. They are successful, but they feel that their talent is being wasted or their creative talent is being wasted. So let's move to the present. The present as caused by the past. The chariot card speaks of triumph, victory, health, and success, though sometimes not stable and enduring. Also taking control of one's life. So this tells us that despite the success of the past, the client currently wants to have more control over their life and take a more active role in their future successes. So far, both of these cards line up with the background of the client as they've revealed the information to us. This tells us that our reading is on the right track. The rest of the reading should be accurate. The third card, which is our immediate future, shows the Emperor. This is war, conquest, victory, strife, ambition. The future is open to the possibility that there will be success, but not without a struggle. However, because this is a major arcana, its influence is very strong, and it shows that provided the client continues forward with their ambitions, they will be more than likely to find success. Alright, in our second triad, we have the Four of Cups, the Page of Rods, and the Judgment card. So, forces that are assisting the Quarant is the Four of Cups. Receiving pleasure or kindness from others, yet some discomfort therewith. This tells me that the client can expect to find success through the assistance of others, and that they should not be uncomfortable accepting help from people who are in a position to move their career forward. Okay, so one of the things that this client suffered with is, is they really kind of want to be a self-made person. They don't want anybody else to be able to claim that they discovered them or, or that, you know, the client achieved their success on the backs of another person who was more well-connected. That has to be eliminated because in the industry that they're in, that counts for a lot. So number five is the environment, page of wands. Incoming user messages, good or bad, depending on the placement. This card explains that the client is actually in the correct place to receive such assistance. That was talked about by the Four of Cups. So the Four of Cups says, don't be afraid to take assistance. And what we're looking at here is the Page of Rods, which can represent a person. And in this particular case, does represent a person. This represents that there is a young woman in the client's environment, aged 18 to 29, in their circle of acquaintances with blonde or red hair who he should be conversing with regarding his ideas and talents. She can offer him the help that he needs. So he needs to seek this person out. Number six is opposing forces, the judgment card. Final decision, judgment, sentence, determination of a matter without appeal on its plane. This card reveals that there really isn't any opposition to the client's success other than those things already discussed. Their desire to be self-made rather than accept assistance. That is their biggest hang-up. If they seek out the help of this blonde or red-headed young woman, they will achieve their success. Because the outcome, card number seven, is the Nine of Pentacles, which represents inheritance and much increase of money. This card shows that the financial gains of the client will soar success is imminent as long as they stay the course and follow the advice. I performed this reading probably about six years ago. I keep a record of every client that I do readings for and what the reading said so that I can follow up and gauge the accuracy of the readings and also so that you know if I don't hear from a client for several months I can refer back to some of their stuff and, and see exactly what it is that we discussed before. What happened with this particular client was they received the reading, they immediately recognized who the, it was a blonde woman, who the blonde woman that could offer them assistance immediately recognized who that was. It was someone that worked in a different company but in the same building in the same industry. So he went to this woman, invited her to lunch, they had some discussions. He told her about an idea that he had for a new show. She thought it was a great idea, she brought it to one of her superiors and they bought the idea. The show is now 
uh, been purchased by uh, a major international television studio as a game show and uh, it is now something that some of you have probably watched before I can't tell you uh, the details of it because uh, of conf confidentiality but this particular show came about because this client came to me and listened to the advice that the cards had given them so this is in a way for you to understand how important it is when you're a reader. You're not just talking about a person's love life or a person's marriage or their job or whatever it is because everything that we do affects everyone else. So by performing this reading for somebody, I was able to guide them correctly. Their career is now soaring. They're financially secure. The show is a success. And performing this reading affected other people's lives because on this particular game show, people win money. So by doing this, the reading has influenced not just my client's life, but the lives of many, many hundreds, if not thousands of people. So when I tell you that you need to take these readings seriously, this is why I say that. Take them seriously. All right, so that's the Sacred Seven spread. You've also got some new meanings for some of the other cards, and uh, you get to see a little bit of how a, a different spread works. Now, like I promised, next video I'm going to start breaking down uh, the cards into their individual meanings uh, so that you guys can follow along uh, with your own tarot decks. Uh, if you're interested in the deck that I uh, use in these videos, it is uh, called a Morgan Greer. Uh, I have a description or the name of it in the... Um, in the uh, descriptions below. Uh, if you enjoy these videos and you think that they're uh, interesting and you'd like to continue to see them, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Also, check out our Patreon page. Uh, subscribe to that if you can. And uh, I will see you again next time.